Well, hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Charles Harper, and um, I have a rare treat for you. And uh, it's, it's not too often that uh, we're able to get someone on the line that has had the kind of experience that our, our guest is going to have. And we're really going to dive into some, I think, some nuts and bolts that I think is really going to help you uh, in your business, regardless of where you are because these are the things that whether you are new or advanced um, the faster that you can get to what we're going to be talking about in this in this audio you're going to be better off and uh, I want to introduce Liz Tomei. Liz? Hi Charles I'm here. Oh cool. Um, Liz you, you, you have uh, you've been around I know that I bought my first product from you in 2008 but but you've actually been around longer than that is that right? Yes, I've been around since uh, 2004. Came out with my first product, so I'm like the I'm like 90 in internet years, and I'm only 37. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you you said uh, at one point you've been doing uh, what HTML since you've been 15 or something like that. Yeah, I started building websites when I was 15 years old. I built my first one for a boyfriend. And it had like a frog hopping across at the top, and it had banners all over it, and it was it was just a hot, glittery <laughs> mess. <laughs> Man, um, well, yeah, you know, I, I've I've um I've been involved in some of the training that you've done, and um, I, I'm I'm just gonna say right out some of the best I've ever attended, um, and in particular, I know one of the things that you you emphasized was you talked about having an upsell and it was kind of been in a more what what a more of an advanced course but you did talk about it and I want to dive into that um in, in this call sp specifically um because I see you kind of doing this really kind of strategically during your product launches and and the first thing I wanted to kind of just get a sense from you is that when you're setting up your your products you're setting up um a funnel are are you do you have a number in mind? Do you have a goal in mind when you do a particular product launch and you're setting up um, the products that are going to be in that funnel? Um, are are you are you are you doing that to achieve a specific goal? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so you know, of course, you know, front end. Um, you, you always have big goals, and it yep. always depends on you know what the product is. If you've limited it, of course you always want to sell out. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. But with your upsells, is what I always shoot for is at least thirty percent of my front end buyers buying my upsell, and eight point five out of ten times I hit that. Wow. Um, and and so what are the what are the the things that you're you're putting into that? Obviously. You know, you're trying to make sure that 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 first upsell is going to be. I've heard that it's supposed to be really tightly integrated into you know whatever they bought in the front end. Or is that the case? Is it is it is it all about the copy, or is it really more about making sure it's really kind of tightly um, related to the first the, the front end offer? All right, I'll tell you. When I go to create an upsell. I always create an upsell that's absolutely irresistible to the buyer um, and very tightly related. If, if you make them one heck of a deal and it's very tightly related to the front end product, the, you, you'll hit those 30%, 50%. I've hit 60-something percent um, on my upsells before. Um, one that we're currently working with now, uh, it's, you know, a workshop. PLR, and then the upsell to that is the PLR to what they what they just bought. That is so tightly focused because it's people who are interested in learning to use PLR. Plus, I offer them PLR, and it's converting at over forty percent, and it's one heck of a deal. So those are the two main things when I go to create an upsell. That's what I'm looking at is what can I give these people that even if they didn't buy the front end, and this is right. very important, your upsells cannot be, uh, they can't rely, the front end can't rely on them to work. Your front end has to be able to stand on its own or you will have highly ticked off customers. Um, but you can always do something where it's so laser targeted to that front end and make that offer absolutely irresistible 
and you'll get those big conversions on your upsells. Yeah, no, that's good. So when you start talking about numbers, are you looking in the upsell? Obviously, it's going to depend on what the upsell is, but is that upsell always going to be a higher, you know, significantly higher than the than the front end, or 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 are you or are you willing to make that? I mean, almost like the same price, or how are you looking at that upsell in terms of price? Okay, it, it always depends on the front end, um, but I'll tell you, my best successes have been when it's like twenty, thirty bucks more. Um, mm -hmm. Then the front end, mm -hmm. um, but if you can do something, and I've even done where my upsell is cheaper than the front end product. So let's say you know I release a product and it's a done for you funnel. I do lots of those. Mm -hmm. So maybe the upsell for an extra ten bucks, they can get extra emails. Those always do awesome. Um, it's it's basically the whole you know hey you just got a hamburger and fries and a coke. Right. You want an ice cream? with that or you know an apple pie you don't always have to go bigger you can go lower and, and you'll have really good success doing that but my best ones have typically been 20 to 30 bucks more um, and like I said it's just a, a lot of value packed into it so now when 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 I talk about upsells um, I, I, I'm talking about again like a series of, of mostly related offers at the point of sale so so can can we walk through Let's maybe walk through one of your best projects, um, whatever it is, and, and and can you just kind of talk me through the logic behind? Let's start with the first upsell. So so if you if you can kind of recount something that you did that you really just like the results from, you know, and and that and that you put it put a first maybe second third upsell. What was the logic behind? Let's start with the first upsell. Okay, well with me, I only do one upsell. 95% of the time. I know a lot of people like to do front end, upsell, downsell, another upsell, another downsell. I don't do that. Uh -huh. And the reason I don't do that is because that's the feedback I get from my customers. Do you make more money when you have a lot of upsells and downsells and stuff like that? Of course you do. <laughs> as long as you don't get crazy and you're not one of these guys with, you know, the never-ending funnels, as I call them. Um, but because of the feedback I get from my customers, I'm willing to leave money on the table. Do I recommend others do that? It's up to you. I'm not going to tell you to leave money on the table. But me personally, I will leave money on the table if my customers tell me they don't like having multiple upsells. And a lot of people will tell you that's the worst advice ever. And it, it probably is. But me specifically, because I love my people, and this is why my people love me, because I actually listen to them, I, I would say 98% of the time only do one upsell. So I can't talk about, you know, huge funnels or anything like that, but I can give you some specifics of, of what I've done. So mm -hmm. for instance, um, the last done for you funnel we did. So when I say done for you funnel, that's where we create a funnel for someone. Sometimes it's a squeeze page yep. with emails um, that they can use and they'll typically, you know, promote affiliate products or we do like whole funnels where it's, you know, squeeze page plus we give them products to promote plus all the emails to put in their autoresponder, all that stuff. So that would be the front end. Yep. And then the upsell to that, we do a lot of um, install services. And that the, the logic behind that is, okay, I've just bought this product, and, you know, I, and I always give videos to show them how to do it, but a lot of people are like, you know, I don't even want to deal with the techie stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't have the time to do it. So we offer an install service. Those always sell great. Um, with coaching programs I've done, we'll have a front end where they can get into the coaching program. Um, let's say, you know, like, like the, the, the one I did on, you know, how to create your own PLR package. Yep. An upsell to that was, hey, I'll create your PLR package for you. Um, you know, my numbers weren't great on that one because it was uh, a $2,000 product as the upsell. You only need a couple um, of those, so. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I went from, hey, get into this coaching program at 97 and then the upsell was for, you know, 1997 we'll create your PLR package for you. So out of, you know, the 50 plus people that um, joined that, we only had five people and I limited it to five people. I know I could have sold more, mm -hmm. um, but I limited it to five people and we only had five people take us up on that $2,000 upsell. But I've got, you know, 10 people, uh, probably more than that, that are on a waiting list 
to have us do that. So I could have sold more, so my numbers are a little skewed there. But again, the reason why I did that is because I'm doing the work for people. Uh, those are always great upsells. They do take a lot more work, but as I just told you, you can charge a lot more money for something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when you when you think about um, um, that, uh, about, and, and that to me, um, even at the point of sale, is that something that, um, let's say that the person, they're going to go and they're going to buy, let's say, y you know, that particular offer where they're going to have you do it. Is, is, there, is there a place to go after that for them? Are you thinking kind of even far out after that, or, or, or is that kind of the end of that funnel, right? They, they get the product made, or is there something else after that? No, generally that's it, because like I said, I, I, I have a front end and usually want to upsell. And um, now I some I have done a couple of like down sells like okay you know maybe you don't want me to create your whole PLR like the, this whole PLR thing maybe you don't want me to create your whole PLR package and you know, and do the launch how about I just create the content for you and you go do the launch and we'll charge a thousand dollars for that mm -hmm. you can definitely do that um, but like I said with me it's usually front end upsell I keep it super simple because once I and even if you're like using affiliates and stuff like that once I get those people on my list. I can always come back to them in a couple of weeks and market more stuff to them. Right, right. So yeah. I don't try and, and cram a funnel full of stuff. And I'm one of the very few people who don't. Yeah. Or now, I, I do see that you are, um, and one of the reasons why I ask you to do this, because I, I, I kind of see you with a, 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 a strategy. I don't know exactly where you're going with it, but, but so you, you, you had someone come into a coaching program and you're also doing coaching where, you know, you've got people who are kind of into the way you do things. And so um, there are some steps that go after the first one and you probably had a lot of people to kind of take you up on the second one. Um, is, is, that, is that going in a particular direction? Like, do you already have it mapped out where you want that to go, or are you kind of using, uh, I guess, the, 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 the people to kind of tell you where the next one needs to go? Exactly, exactly. I, I poll my people constantly. I'm talking to my people on Facebook. I'm asking them what they need. So let's say I release a product on affiliate marketing. I have that front-end offer, um, and let's say it's a coaching program, and mm -hmm. then, you know, I have an upsell to that. So once I get those people in and, you know, I've, I've provided great value, they love my product, I always go back to them and go, okay, guys, what else do you want? And they'll go, well, Liz, I want to learn about affiliate marketing with a blog. Then I'll go create that product, and then I can go back to those same people. I didn't have to stuff it in a funnel. I can go back to those same people and go, hey, here's something on that. Or I can pull in one of my other products and be like, hey, you know, you guys are interested in affiliate marketing. Here's a different way to do it. Same thing, you know, if I was doing a blogging coaching program, I can pull one of my other products in once they, they're on my list as a buyer. You don't have to cram it all into your funnel. I, I could literally, you know, create a funnel that's, you know, a mile long, uh, but I just don't <laughs> because, like I said, the feedback from my people. Yeah, now someone, um, uh, or not someone, or probably a lot of people, um, uh, these days they're, they're putting, um, I guess, recurring um, you know, re recurring uh, income yes. offers in the funnel. What do you, what do you think about that? And, and sort of what's your what's your science on that? I think it's a wonderful idea. I do it with every PLR package. Um, currently rebuilding our uh, PLR membership site, uh, and I'm a little different than most people because I I release coaching programs on business models. I release coaching programs and and products. I release um, products on internet marketing tactics, <clears throat> excuse me, and then I release uh, PLR packages. Okay, so I, I basically run three different businesses. But in my PLR business um, is what we do is we will release a PLR package and then we always, the upsell is into our uh, membership site. Creating a recurring income, I mean, that should be your first goal. Um, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, with your own membership or if you're doing it as an affiliate marketer, whatever. Um, but that should be a huge goal because you need that recurring income to pay those recurring bills that you get each month. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that is a wonderful idea if you can do it. So PLR in that business, we release a PLR package, 
put people into a PLR membership. In my internet marketing business, is what I do is I um, release a product on you know some internet marketing tactic. My upsell to that is to get into um, Lessons with Liz, uh, which is my membership site that does nothing but teach people different internet marketing tactics. Um, with my business model stuff, I release a product that's about a business model. The upsell is to get my Make Money Online Coach, which is another membership site. Um, so I have a membership site for each of my online businesses, and I think it's a, a, a wonderful upsell. So part of the goal of, of having an upsell at all, if, at minimum, someplace in the funnel, um, if, 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 if a person can, they ought to consider what kind of value they can provide on a regular basis and then make that recurring. Is that, is that what I hear? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, um, I and I see nothing wrong with doing you know the, the whole you know here's this product. Now, if you join my membership site, you can get all my products you know monthly. Lots of people are doing that right now, and it's a great upsell idea. Um, usually, the going rate for something like that is like ninety-seven bucks, but you got to kind of have a reputation already. You need to have a lot of products in there. Um, but it's definitely something that uh, you could use as an upsell. Now, when you say 97, you're saying 97 monthly or 97 a year or what? what, do you, what, what 97 do you... monthly if you're going to do the, I call it the best friend package, the BFF package. <laughs> um, you just bought this product. How would you like to become my best friend and get all of my products um, that I, you know, release because most of us, we are putting out at least one product a month. Mm -hmm. um, and this is specifically for the internet marketing, make money online niche. Um, how about you get, you know, my membership and you never have to pay another dime except for your monthly fee. And you usually have to throw a few things in like, you know, weekly webinar, um, you know, stuff like that. And the more personal time you can put into something like that, the more you can charge for it too. No, that's uh, that that's good. So now, uh, kind of um, to kind of wrap up this this discussion on funnels. Um, so so th there is the there is the funnel that happens at the point of sale, and then there's also this longer funnel that goes over time, like you were saying, which is you know what's the next step, and you're sort of talking to people. Now, obviously, social media um, makes it easy now, but before social media. How are you talking to people? How are you finding out what it was that you needed to do in order, you know, to put together those other offers that kind of go what I call horizontal, like the next step kind of stuff? Okay. Uh, I've always, always talked to my people via email. Um, I'll, I'll send it because um, I just in the last six months have I really started using social media in my business and it's made it explode. Um, but before social media, I was sending out, you know, polls to my list. Hey guys, here's some things I'm thinking about doing. Of these things, what would you like to see? Um, or having people, or sending out an email and say, hey, reply back to this email. Tell me what your biggest uh, problem you're, you're currently facing in your business is. Or with my PLR people, hey guys, what kind of PLR content would you like to see next? Reply back to this email. Let me know. Uh, a lot of people are actually scared to do that. You shouldn't be because only about maybe five to ten percent will actually hit that reply button. Mm -hmm. So it's not even if you had a list of a hundred thousand people, you know, it's not like the floodgates are going to open and you're going to be answering emails for the next six months. Right. <laughs> uh, usually, with me, if I if I send out one of those emails that says, "Hey, reply back," it'll take me about two days to get through all the replies because I do have a larger list. Um, but don't be afraid to do stuff like that. You've just got to be able to communicate with your people, constantly get them to interact, and, and that's just a, a, a marketing strategy uh, all the way around, not just getting feedback from them on what you can create next, but when you get people to interact with you, reply back to your emails and stuff like that, that gets them used to interacting with you, which means they're going to be clicking on your links more. They're going to be doing everything more with you. Um, so it's just a great interaction tactic too. But that that's how I do it. Polls, um, email, I do weekly webinars. I'm always talking to my people on webinars. They're giving me feedback. I am very accessible. Uh, a lot of people say too accessible, especially for what I charge. Mm -hmm. um, but I am very accessible and people are always coming to me saying, hey Liz, I need this or I need that or Hey, did you see so and so's product? It totally sucked. I bet you could do way better. <laughs> you know, so my people are very, very vocal with me. Yeah, and I love that. I love that. Now, so, 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 
if you had to just kind of um, uh, just kind of advise somebody who maybe it's their first product and I and, and I don't know if you remember far back but sometimes you know when you when you first create something the first time I mean you feel like you're huffing and puffing just to get a front-end offer and and the mm -hmm. idea of putting together an upsell you know for for some people and I've talked to people it's it's overwhelming so um, can, can we can we close out can you give advice to the person to whom uh, you, you know they put together a product but now uh, you're telling me I got to put an upsell together now um, help that person to kind of think through how they might either on this one or the next one put together an upsell or a series of them all right well the first thing I tell them to do is take a deep breath because once you get that first product done it's like oh my god I just want to see the money uh -huh. and we're all racing to the money and you can't do that. This is something you've got to step back, take your time with, just focus on what's in front of you. Got that front end done? Okay, now my upsell. What can I do with this upsell? Well, with social media now, you should be creating your own little tribe. So you should have people that you're interacting with and people that you can go to and say, hey, you know, I've done this and here's my front end product. What are some ideas for an upsell? Um, you can also get yourself a coach. Everybody's like, oh, my God, coaching's so expensive. Uh, if you don't have somebody who knows what they're doing, you're actually costing yourself money by not having a coach. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's something else you can definitely do. Uh, but my, my main thing is take your time, get feedback, and then w <clears throat> once you have an idea of what you're going to do, it, it's just like creating product number two. You get it done, you put everything together, then you go into launch mode. Um, but you've got to take a deep breath and take your time. You can't be racing to the money, and that's probably the, the biggest piece of advice I can give people and what I see all my newbies doing. They're just money, 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 money. And I'm like, whoa, calm down. we got to make sure everything, you know, is good to go. Make sure, you, you know, that your funnel's actually going to work. Um, so that's my biggest piece of advice. Just calm down, take it slow, you'll get there. Mm -hmm. Once again, Liz, thank you um, for, uh, for sharing with us. No problem. I was glad to do it. You are my superstar student, and I so appreciate you and Laurel so much. Awesome. Everybody, this has been Charles Harper and Liz Tomei, and uh, thanks. And then once again, um, the PLR forward slash Liz.